I know that on several days she was in extreme pain, but she never, from muscle aches, you know, from, from cramps, but she never complained. She never asked to stop. She never even asked to rest. In wow. fact, someday she would run up to three miles in one take. I'm five miles from home. I don't have a car and tell me what's happening. There are five people barricaded. Your son is one of them and so is the suspect. Our negotiator's in contact. He doesn't have your negotiator son, does he? He has mine and an AR-15. Do something about it. Philip, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Uh, just a second, I'm going to tell my team that. Uh, there we where go. are you? I'm in Chicago. How about you? New Orleans. New Orleans? Oh, very nice. I I'm sure the weather is a lot better there than, than it is by me. Well, it's sunny here. Yeah. That helps. Yeah, we're just still covering, you know, coming out from like 19 degree weather, you know, high yesterday. So it's slightly warmed up. So you know what I'm in for. Yeah. Are you are you filming anything, New Orleans, or just kind of on a vacation? Maybe. Um, uh, no, I wish. Um, but making films is a is a vacation. Um, I'm uh, preparing a film that I start shooting in like March. To go Fast Charlie, it stars um, Pierce Brosnan. Oh, very cool. It's a gangster movie. I like it. Yeah. I'll be looking forward to it. I've been a, been a long time fan of your work. And I'll tell you one thing about this movie. I, I went to the gym before seeing it and I'm, I was a lot more exhausted after I watched the film than I was after my hour workout. So. <laughs> well, I guess uh, Naomi did the work for all of us. Oh my goodness, Phil. I mean, the tension in that movie was just unpalpable. I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's there. It lo literally grabs you and it doesn't let up. There's not a second where it, it gives you a break to breathe. Literally. It. I, I was just trying to imagine the whole time, like, you know, being involved, watching the film and then trying to like, see how how did you manage to get her to constantly i mean it must be exhausting as a viewer to watch but much less for her to to bring out so much emotion and, and this tension it was just unbelievable I, I couldn't really rationalize how her performance was so spot on at every point in this movie was it almost asking too much of her did you feel at any time did you feel kind of maybe guilty at some point you're like wow i'm having her really just bear her soul out Yes, I did feel guilty, but not because of the emotionality of it, but just mm -hmm. the physicality. The physicality you know, too, yeah. The poor, the poor dear. I mean, usually in a movie, you know, you have maybe seven characters that you can cut away from and other people that you can, if something goes wrong, that you can pick up a scene with. But here, it's mainly just Naomi, 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 uh, you know, in the desperate hour. And uh, yeah. so... And she's moving so much through wooded areas, thickly forested, uh, unpaved roads. Um, and what she did, which was, uh, which I didn't realize until about uh, day four of the shoot, was smart. She let herself get exhausted, as she naturally would, mm -hmm. day after day. And so that every previous day was the rehearsal for the next day because we shot the film in, in, in sequence, in order. Oh, wow. The beginning and going through to the end. Mm -hmm. So today she's getting more and more exhausted, uh, more and more muscle cramps, wow. you know, uh, more and more physically, dis mentally disembodied. She forgets the lines or she she, 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 you know, she used that, um, you know, as part of her performance. Um, and I guess there was no other way for her to do it. I know that on several days she was in extreme pain, but she never, from muscle aches, you know, from, from cramps, but she never complained. She never asked to stop. She never even asked to rest. In wow. fact, 
Some days you would run up to three miles in one take. And on one day, she put cinematographer, two camera operators, and two grips who were pushing the trolley that the camera operator was sitting on. She pushed all of them, three, five, five men wow. into the sick bay. I mean, she was running and performing. They were recording her, but they just ran out of steam and had to uh, be attended by the medic. Naomi kept going. Um, and I think that's also, you know, the, 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 the part of her as an Australian. Uh -huh. In Australia, we grew up making movies without a studio system. So if you got into trouble, there was no one to bail you out. You had to finish the day's work, finish the movie, and usually your, even your fee for making the movie was tied into the insurance, the no bonus insurance, the no claim insurance bonus. Uh -huh. So, so you, lo and behold, we always finished it. And you couldn't complain, you just had to do it. Right. Whereas here in America, of course, the studio systems, you get into trouble, the studio comes in, takes pays for the overage and so on. Well, in this film, Naomi was taken back to her roots in Australia. There she was. She could, couldn't complain. She had to finish. There's no one else to appear on the screen. Um, we've got a limited amount of time to make the movie and a limited budget as well. Um, she just did it. And she used all of that necessity as the mother of her invention. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, whoever was the location scout, marvelous job, because this movie is a different movie in a different location or different setting. I mean, uh, you guys found the most picturesque place, but also very, how, how you made such a, like a beautiful, like tree, you know, kind of like path, you know, like fall type of day into this like very scary place. It's, it's unbelievable because visually it looks like such a beautiful, relaxing place, but it's anything but that. It's the most, you know, kind of claustrophobic and scary place for this character. Uh, so it's a weird kind of like juxtaposition of like, wow, visually it looks supposed to be looking relaxing, but it's anything but that. Tell me about the location. Did you guys have any other in mind? Did you know this is the one when you saw it? Because I felt it was like a big character in this movie. Well, it was a big character. Um, it's in North Bay, Northern Ontario, mm. uh, the town of North Bay. Um, and we chose that because number one, during the pandemic, it was one of the places in North America that had zero infections. Wow. So we were going from, uh, you know, a closed down America into a partially opened Canada, into a part of Canada where there hadn't been uh, an infection for, for four months. So that was a, hu a huge relief to be able to work outdoors in a day, what was at that time a COVID free environment. Um, and that was very much an attraction in doing the film, you know, just being able to get back to work, but do it safely. Um, the locations were chosen because there's such a wonderful diversity of, of forest yes. locations in that, in that area, you know. The colors were think, amazing. The tree colors well, were the just colors, like- The colors, you know, we were, you know, I've made a, a film years ago called Dead Cow with Nicole Kidman. Mm -hmm. And the film was that we were, in the Great Barrier Reef off the northeastern coast of New South of, of Australia, and it was whales waiting season, uh, mating season. You know, when the humpback whale, uh, as they would for life, stay together as partners for life. Well, that was an amazing experience to be there during that time, and this film was amazing to be there during the time of the of the uh, fall colours changing. You right. know, to to gold, green to gold. And that's uh, been one of my uh, um, bucket list <laughs> wishes that I could go to Canada and watch Changing of the Leaves while well, I did it this year while well, well, I made a movie. And you have it on tape now to prove it. You know, it's unbelievable. I, I, like I said, it, it's visually, it just, it, it's crazy how it, it, it kind of, 
parallels the the action on screen versus the visual. Like I said, it's a very calming looking setting, but but what the action of what's going on is completely different. You know, I don't know how much stock you hold in reviews and stuff, but I was so curious about this movie. I was curious to see what people are saying. And, and you know what? It, it actually kind of pissed me off. I, I read some people were saying, oh, this, this is a kind of a manipulative potentially movie or exploitive movie. And it bothered me, you know, because it bothered because I think this is so unfortunately true to life. And I think to kind of see the other side of it and, and what, in a sense, a parent has to go to, I think it's very important to witness that it, it, the, the day and age we are in society. And it bothers me that people might not be, not maybe take that, even, especially even like critics or whatnot, might not realize that. Um, did you think about how people might take in this film in, in a lot of ways? Because I think there is a very important message with this movie to be seen and kind of the, the social and culture we're in that these things are possible. But it bothers me almost in the sense that people are kind of using it to think of something negative potentially that's exploitation and manipulation. I don't know. It, it personally bothered me. I don't know how you would react to such a thing. Well, um, it'll be interesting now that the film is going out and finding its real audience as opposed to, to maybe critics at the film festival. Um, the only screening I've been in so far was at the uh, Toronto Film Festival mm -hmm. for 3,000. Canadians and others from all over the world, um, and you know that was a, that was a very positive response. So I think it's a movie that's made for audiences to watch, uh, and it's made for mums and dads, and you know who have families. Yeah, um, not necessarily a movie that's made for critics. Um, like all my films, you know, uh, I try and make films that involve and please the audience, um, number one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, when I'm making the movie, I imagine myself sitting in my favorite seat about row five up close to the screen. Um, and every scene I watch, I, I, as, I, as I film it, I, I experience the experience that I imagine the audience have when they're enveloped in the emotions and the story that I'm bringing to the screen. So, you know, uh, critics are wonderful. Sometimes they find films for us all that otherwise we, we would uh, not find. Um, and the Japanese film this year that's nominated for an Oscar, mm -hmm. uh, Drive My Car, is a perfect example of a film that was, that was championed by critics. So, uh, you know, they, they, they certainly sometimes do wonderful things for us, us filmmakers. <laughs> sometimes not too i'm a critic i understand this like I, I i as a fan like i'm like i wouldn't listen to critics even though i am technically one but i'm like you know each person has their own taste in movies and there's always something to take away from any movie that you might not see but someone else might relate to and see so it's like i always felt like as a critic like yeah you can get an idea of what i i personally thought about it but i want you to still take a chance explore a movie and get your own meaning from it you know i think everyone you know, ultimately takes different messages and, and, you know, gets to have a different experience, you know, to a movie um, in that way. I was going to ask you to this movie, like I mentioned off the start, had so much tension and, and you've done movies with tension, too. I, I've been a fan of a movie recently. I saw Above Suspicion it was really good, too. Um, how do you create tension? Because that's one thing I always wonder as filmmakers, you know, it, it's it, to get an audience member to be locked in. And, and, you know, with today's distractions, you, especially you're watching at home, maybe, or, you know, you have the cell phone always, you're kind of looking over at things, you're, you're looking to be distracted. But to grip an audience to be focused on every second of it, how do you build that as a filmmaker? Do you rationally think about that? Um, what points uh, to, to keep that inflection and keep them engaged? Because it's hard to get people's attention these days. It's just so many distractions. But I think you've done a masterful job in your career. Well, you know, it's a simple formula. Hmm. You've got to have a character that the audience care about. Mm -hmm. Then you've got to show a danger to the character's equilibrium. And then you're just cutting between the character and the danger, the character and the danger. If the danger is universally recognized by the audience, and if, the, if their sympathy is with the character, that's what's called tension. 
The closer they get to the danger, <laughs> the more tension there is. Now, there are various ways of, um, uh, of, of you know, um, exaggerating that. And principally in, in the movies, it's with the use of music. Imagine um, Psycho without Bernard Herrmann's fabulous musical score. Why? And, and if you watch this film without Phil Eisler's score, it would be Great. a completely different experience as well because Phil Eisler is working the audience, involving them um, in every single plot change um, with, you know, skillful, uh, uh, um, uh, skillfully written music. Mm -hmm. So sympathy for the, for the, the character, a, a universally recognized danger to the character, and then finally the screenplay that's written at the end of the movie, when it's all shot, just before it's released, which is this, the, the musical soundtrack. Mm -hmm. They're the elements that produced tension. No question, that's well said. <laughs> I don't know if we, you know, I have Sh Shazam on my phone, you just kind of click it and it, it tells you what song it is. I kept on using it during this movie to get the different songs uh, throughout and kind of the musical background, because I thought that was wonderful and, and it really played into to everything in it. Um, as I l let you go here with the last question, uh, I'm curious, you know, I followed your career for a long time. What are some things you kind of do in your free time? Because I'm always fascinated upon them by filmmakers and actors. Like, what do they do when they're not working? You know. Do you have any hobbies or interests you like to kind of get away to, uh, to maybe, you know, kind of clear your mind to? You know, I've been doing this and, and my son asked uh, a few years ago, what's your father do for a living? Hmm. He said, well, he yells action and cut. <laughs> <laughs> and, and since I was 18 years old, that's what I've been doing for a living, mm -hmm. just yelling action and cut. What I do to get away from movie making is I have a young family, a son who's 14, mm -hmm. which was perfect for going through the tensions experienced by Naomi's character in this movie. You know, the yeah. question that I have about my 14 year old and I have an 11 year old girl and they are my hobby um, between movie making and, and helping my wife to bring those kids up. That's my life. I like that. You know, the simple things in life that matter that you don't take for granted, you know, and I think family is the number one that comes there. So you got your priorities straight, Philip, that's for sure. <laughs> well, and then the priorities that would naturally lead me to be able to deliver this particular story right. about the desperate hour that every parent in the world fears that they're going to have to face. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. I thought it was phenomenal. I haven't been gripped like that in a long time by a film. So uh, great job. I, I, I hope people see it. It's an amazing performance and just a, a unique movie in that way. And I can't wait to see more from you. I've been a fan for a long time. I'm excited about the Pierce Brosnan movie that you spoke about and keep them coming, Philip. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> great. <laughs> I'll catch up with you on the next one then. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.